Okay. All right. Welcome everybody to the August second meeting of the Tri Board. So we have representatives here tonight from the Finance Committee and the School Committee um, and the Select Board. So um, focus on the Tri Board meeting tonight is to um, obtain updates where warranted from the respective groups and then uh, focus in primarily on the special town meeting and fall town meeting um, that are coming up and all of the uh, financial all of the financial conundrums wrapped around that. Conundrums, wow. Conundrums, I like that word. I don't word. That yeah, is. Is. <laughs> Maybe 10 for some. Isn't it Calendra? Heather, did you? Calendra. No. Did check you want to wait? Committee on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea that from the plural of conundrums. So. <laughs> so did you want to provide an update or did you want to hold off? You thought, um, Anne's coming tonight, or? I don't think Annie's coming tonight. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm happy to provide a brief update. Of sure. One topic is just literally was brought to our attention this morning um, that you and I just spoke of, which is that the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion School is resubmitting its charter amendment to double its enrollment. Um, that, that does have some implications for us that we, as a school committee, uh, need to meet to deliberate uh, a discussion around taking a public stance about this. Mm -hmm. um, it impacts us financially. We've taken a stance previously about the expansion of charter schools, but this in particular uh, relates to the funding formula that the state uses and how that impacts us. And what, what we would like to talk about is um, the projections that we would see economically and how that would impact our budget. So mm -hmm. literally, I just got that today, um, but we intend to discuss that at our next meeting. Um, we do have an interim meeting that will be posted, um, you just told me the date, August, August 14th. August 14th for the superintendent evaluation. I think if it hasn't okay. been posted yet, we can post that as an additional topic since we'll all be in attendance. But our regular meeting will be August 28th at the end of the month. Okay. And then, um, in, and if you don't have the answer to this, that I'm not meaning to put you on the spot, um, but there have been some conversation at a previous meeting about where the, the books, so to speak, might be winding up for the school. And we know that when you did your original um, funding request to the town, you had an expectation that you were going to use X amount of the school choice dollars to help bridge that gap between grant money, town contribution, and, um, and then the balance from school choice. Yes. And uh, any major surprises there, or are you coming in generally where you expected? We're coming in generally where we expected. We reviewed that at our last meeting. Chris went over that. We were um, slightly under what we thought we had to spend by way of school choice to make up that, that shortfall. So what we asked okay. for at the next meeting was a balance sheet on our school choice um, funds so that we would understand what is there, what's coming in, and what is allocated in the next year's budget. Okay, good. And, and the reason that that's important is just I know that there um, had been some reports um, about a shortfall of $400,000, and, and but wanted to make sure that that wasn't a surprise of $400,000, that it was already in the context of what, um, you know, what you had planned on. And again, I think that amount really was the, the amount that you needed to draw from school choice in order to make your books balance. I'm not sure if the 400000 was figure was in relation to the separate athletic field project, possibly, and capital plans. But oh, okay. that that was a figure that was discussed in relation to capital planning for the athletic field project. Okay. Uh, but but not, that's not something that came up as a surprise that we were okay. 400 thousand dollars short okay again we just wanted to clarify yeah. that while people are listening to make sure that we're hearing it right from the from the schools and that's clear right so, okay yep all right good when's your next meeting uh, our next meeting posted for the superintendent evaluation is august 14th uh, that's monday at 4 p.m it'll be in the superintendent's office and our next regular meeting will be monday the 28th at um, 6 p.m at Hopkins. And I understand that the town meeting is the 29th, is that correct? That's Special. the date that was voted upon. Um, we've had a, a little bit of pushback on that, which is something that we need to talk about okay. tonight. Um, and actually, the, the pushback, um, it was okay to just jump right into that 
issue up front? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I think personally I've seen three emails, and I don't know if there are any more, but I've, I've seen three email requests to change the date, all coming from people who are concerned that it's the night before school starts. Um, I, I mean, I have my own opinion about it. I've got kids, um, they aren't in the schools right now. I do too, and you better sit on me or kick me under the table. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, just, just to make sure that for, for anybody who's listening at, at home or you know, anybody in the viewing audience right now, I mean, when um, many of you were here when we went through trying to figure out when to have this town meeting, and while I mean, we certainly appreciate everybody has their own circumstances and we would never um, disrespect or ignore a particular group of people and purposefully try to prevent them from coming to a town meeting. Um, the issue we have is that we, we have been far more focused on making sure that we had as much information as possible so that people could make an informed decision. And I think that was the, the driver in all the conversations that we've had. It's like, what, what date could we have this and make sure that we had as much information as possible about these building projects, which are the only four articles right now on that warrant. Um, and none of them directly related to the schools. My guess is it's, uh, it's likely some of the folks who uh, may be concerned about the library in particular that are concerned about the date. But we also had, we also had to back up from the other end, um, and and we you know we have a legal requirement that you know we only we can only go so far into the month of September, and we have to line up the town moderator, we had to line up the town school. council, we had to make sure that the venue, the physical venue of the school, was available. Um, so I mean I'm just going to say personally for me. I'm not quite clear what it is that, that goes on the night before school starts. I remember having to make lunches for my kids. But at that point, I pretty much bought their clothes, and they're pretty excited, typically. Well, buying supplies the night before school. Well, and, and even school supplies, a lot of times you wait for the list, depending if you're at elementary or, or high school. But I guess the point is, from my standpoint, I'm only speak for myself and let others chime in. I, again, would never ever want to disadvantage a group of people or purposely prevent them from coming, but we've had a similar issue with seniors wanting to not start the meeting at 7 o'clock. I mean, they would prefer to start it earlier and not have to drive in the dark or have it on a Saturday morning, and then the farmers are upset because they can't come, to, you know. So this isn't purposeful, and we're quite consciously trying to do the very best we can by picking that date to accommodate as many folks as possible. Um, and I'm sure that there will be groups out there who would be more than happy to provide uh, child care. Oftentimes a group steps up. I know your daughter's done it before, my kids have. Um, I think Park and Rec actually is doing it this for this town meeting. Okay, yeah. I mean, so there will be that opportunity and I, maybe we can try to spread that word um, through the various groups. But that, that was the issue. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure that we can really comfortably move it because then we start getting into mandatory athletic meeting at the school and, and um, you soccer know. practice and soccer games Get, yeah. because they do suburban league and yeah. you know it's a once school starts it's you roll. Yeah it's actually uh, worse once you know, yeah so once you hit the and them getting to even fall town meeting has been a chore for people to get there and for even us to get our quorum. I mean we've struggled on many occasions between spring or fall town meeting um, to get a quorum. Mm -hmm. So we would like all that can participate make it and if you can't we're sorry. Um, but this is the timeline that we have chosen that works best for everybody that we feel is the best timeline to get this uh, special town meeting done before our fall town meeting takes place also. There's no date that's ideal for everybody in town no matter what we choose. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any, anybody have a position to the contrary that feels strongly that we should try to find in the I just, care? Um, yeah. Typically the town meetings though were on Thursday, so I didn't know. I was here at the meeting. I didn't realize as a trustee, I'm a little older, my kids are not part of the school system. I, didn't, right. I was saying, oh, it's good families will be back. School has started, but mm -hmm. I did not realize it's the night before the first day of school, which mm -hmm. I know is a big deal. It was for my family mm -hmm. um, years ago. but. Um, I didn't know because it w whether because we were had 
um, like the 31st, a few Thursdays thrown out originally, so I just mm -hmm. didn't know it went to the Tuesday. So that's yeah. my question. Yeah, and I think the concern there is um, you're going right into a long holiday weekend. Oh. So there are a lot of people who are actually, that's kind of the last hurrah of the summer, and I they. Know. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why we honestly thought yeah. that the 29th oh, okay. was a better date for everybody mm -hmm. before the kids get into school and then they're all coming home and trying to switch classes and they had issues, you know, whatever goes on. So. What's the start time? Seven. Seven, seven o'clock, yeah. We asked six o'clock, that was tossed around, but then we felt um, it's only getting, out of, work. getting mm -hmm. out of work and it's only four articles, so. Yeah. We just felt that seven would be sufficient time. I mean, we're hoping that the town meeting, um, to your point, with only four articles, doesn't last nearly as long as a 21 article town meeting. But who knows? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> okay. All right, so then we'll stick with the 29th. And again, Karen, maybe, you know, it, it just happens that I think three of the folks who did. Um, express some concern about the date. Yeah, I, I had heard that. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I I have a feeling that they're they're tied around the library in particular, and I, I could be wrong. I know at least one of them is because it. Right. One know, of them had reached out as soon as we put the date out there um, from our capital campaign committee, yeah. and then um, you know a flurry of emails went around, and I'm not familiar with some members. Um, yeah, I but I just um, yeah we will pass the word out and, and do our best to get the word out and I believe um, Park and Rec, as Jerry said, had offered something so um, Patrick and I you know, reached out to Melissa and you know said that it's a great idea if we can get something rolling. Cause Did she get back to you? Pass. No, not today because I just found out today. Okay. So, because um, it was done by the Girl Scouts, the cheerleaders, the PTO, yeah. years yeah. past. Way back. It, it's a different night but I think, um, you know, We'll try to make every effort to get families and get the community out there for all these articles. For all the articles, for everybody. Right. If it's of their interest, they'll be there. All right. Let's put it like that. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so do we want to go into the, the special, special town meeting, the April 29th for articles right First. now? So any. Any updates since our last conversation that are important? I think that, uh, Linda, you may have an updated number from the library. The library is also here. You may have an updated number. I still have the 3.5 in the, uh, the warrant. Right. Well, we, um, as we expressed before, it's not going to be 3.5. It would be closer to 3.8. Um, as I told you last meeting, what Al actually Allison did, um, that we were waiting for our architect and project manager to review the budget now that we know we have the 33.9 million from the grant. Um, and the, they, one has looked at it, passed the, his notes on to the OPM, and as of this afternoon, we haven't got any response from him of one way or another, of, of things that maybe could come out or would be lower. Um, when the projection was done, we didn't realize we'd be as early okay. on the list. So, um, so those numbers might actually be reduced. We don't um, know at this point. So, when we met with David Nixon and um, Linda Sanderson about the timeline and how to spread out um, the borrowing, uh, we submitted the 3.8, but the trustees haven't met with all this information yet because we don't have it yet. We will on Tuesday at a trustee meeting hopefully have everything and be able to give a more accurate number to put actually on the warrant. And so I had a question yeah. with, with all of this and coming back at a larger number. Um, your original plan was for what and you were going to get what for reimbursement for the state? So you've got 3.9 reimbursement. Because your total project was? I mean, it's roughly around $8 million. The, the issue is that when we um, submitted the application, the application, we didn't know what year we would receive the grant. It's five years, so the, the, the project includes escalation. 
much of which will now not come into play because we're in the first year. Which would drive the cost down. Down. So the, the project hopefully mm -hmm. will be less expensive than we initially thought because we're doing it in the first, we're beginning in the first round of libraries that are building. So that's why we're waiting for the, for the architect and OPM to look at that budget, look at it now in the context of reality rather than in the context of the application and what the MDLC, the Board of Library Commissioners, requires. So that's just taking a few days for them to go back and forth and um, you know get on the same page. They both went away and are now you know, just back to work this week. So just so, so that people know the, the percentage of reimbursement that you got, like the school was 62%. What is your reimbursement? What is that you actually don't know percentage? Exactly, but it's going to be more than 50%. More than 50%. And that's, so, that's the best. I mean, that's the most. That's the best we can say now. So they never tagged it in the beginning when they when you were going for your. Um, we we understood that it could be as much as fifty four percent, but again, we don't know until they come back and actually define how much the, the project is going to cost, so that we can look at it relative to the three point nine that we know we're being offered. So we just we just can't say, okay. but we know that it's more than fifty percent. Okay. And so on the warrant, it would be less than 3.9 we felt comfortable throwing it around the number 3.8 and that's what um linda had used for her tabulations and calculations okay david and donald both of you you can you pick it up there. First and, uh, yeah maybe then you can clarify what i've got to say maybe yes. initially when we asked the taxpayers we combined everything and it all went out it's going to raise your taxes 95 dollars Hypothetically, it was almost impossible to plug all these figures in to know exactly what they were. But at the time, we plugged in, and I, you can clarify this with David and the treasurer possibly, to the figure of 2.9, okay? So now we're looking at 3.8 additional to that 2.9, which is getting closer to a million dollars over and above what we have plugged in. So that $95 that we had estimated is going to escalate way up to pick up that million dollars. And um, I think when that 2.9, if I'm correct, we didn't have the, the final figure. Again, it was... No, I'm not saying it's anybody's right. mistake no, or anything. Right. It's no different than the mm -hmm. fire station and console on aging. When everybody plugged their figures in, nobody had the exact amounts. It was sort of like a guessing game and everything was plugged into that 95 and now we're getting the true figures back and it's completely different yeah. we need to we need to reconcile it for right. the taxpayers is, is the issue and that's a, it's just been a moving target and right. we're all struggling with trying to figure out what, where it right is. and we understand the urgency of it so we're trying yeah. to get that number we thought we had till october so now we're we're scrambling to with our yeah advisors so at the end of uh, last week's meeting, we met on all, all four projects, uh, or three projects, met on, on Thursday and for a couple of hours. It was a very productive meeting. We, we did a number of things. We decided when is each project likely to occur. So we uh, we put together a timeline as to who's going first, what do they need when they go first, what does the cash flow look like. Uh, and we also uh, uh, looked at what do we need to borrow when. Mm -hmm. you know, we don't need the whole 3.8 in the first year for the library. Uh, we also <coughs> were able to coordinate the project so that they actually work together since these are all joined at the hip, if you will. The, the library is not going to go until the senior center goes and the senior center is not going to go until the senior center is built. So putting together this, uh, this roadmap, if you will, uh, gives us the coordination of the projects that we were looking for, as well as uh, spelling out when do we need to borrow what, uh, and we're feeding this information out to our chief financial advisor, who's then going back to this question of $95. Are we still within the $95 for the long term? Is it some other number? Um, how can we shape that borrowing using state money when it comes in from the library project uh, in the most effective way possible to make this affordable? Linda, you've done a lot of work right. on this. Uh, right, we, we have um, 
I, I think the, the goal of this round with um, our advisor, David Eisenthal, is to uh, update that figure that we did before. Um, when we had um, the increase in taxes or the increase in payments that we were going to do, it was um, ultimately um, he, he spread out the financing or basically around the needs that we have and using short-term bans rather than going immediately into a bond so that we had an option of doing interest only for on various items for a couple of years. So we raised the payments by almost $300,000 the first year and then kept it at that level. And then uh, that became, at that time, uh, you know, we, we figured it an increase to the average household of $95. That was not a total, that's not the total cost of the project. We don't get all these buildings for $95 a year. That was an increase to what our current um, debt exclusion tax number was at that time. The tax, uh, we have a number of things coming off the uh, debt schedules. So the cost of the in first year, we have an increase of the $95 and we'll stay at that level, but more and more of that total tax will be taken up with the new debt as the old debt goes off. So the idea was to keep it there. So since it's not just a matter of Oh, well, how much are we borrowing? How much is that a year? I mean, that's a good starting place, but what he does with it is work out a, cl a cash flow to minimize that, uh, minimize the ups and downs and to minimize the total increase over a period of time. And I think our, our goal was to get to a certain level and make sure that it stayed there for about five years. So clearly that 95, if we just add anything to, the, the, to it, it's going to increase above the 95. I don't think there's any question with adding on, um, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, a million or, or two million. It's, it's going to add to that. The amount that it's going to add to um, is, is I'm not quite sure yet. The, port of, the point of this meeting on Friday was to find out, as David said, this, the um, timeline, which it was set out in um, one of these handouts. And we have a total amount that needs to be borrowed in each year for the needs of that year, which will make the payments begin a year later, which, which uh, helps us. As you can see, the, the library doesn't even kick in until 2020, and the bulk of our borrowing will be in 2019, and we, we get through fairly well in 2018. And um, you know, for all of the uh, all of the voting that we did last year, the we, all we borrowed in fiscal 2017 was less than two hundred thousand dollars. So um, we we push that off, but we keep the level up so that we, if we're not paying a higher uh, more interest on the buildings, if we haven't borrowed as much, then we're able to pay off the backhoe, the the fire engine, the police cruisers, and the other things that we're borrowing. So we just accelerate um, those payments on other capital items while we wait for the buildings to kick in. So um, on Friday when we got this timeline, and now we know much how much needs to be borrowed in each year, now I will convey this to David Eisenthal. The hope was that we would have it have that information back so the 95 then will become something else. It's going to be something higher than that. Um, but so again, so that people could plan and make a decision about it, and hopefully that you would have it at the, at the meeting where you are posting the um, posting the warrant, which would be next Wednesday. So that's okay. our that's our timeline. And Linda, can mm -hmm. I just want to go back to and actually maybe this is more um, for Karen, but you know we're talking about the library being roughly eight million dollars. You know, so we're talking about three point nine million dollar grant. Karen is saying now they're more comfortable with a three point eight million dollar ask, getting closer to. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's your getting close to your eight point million. But there's also uh, a private fundraising going on. Yes, right. and I I think that's part of what's getting lost in the sauce here because when we have sure. Allison and folks here, people are saying no, I mean, the cost really didn't go up, but. Perhaps when Linda was looking at the borrowing before, she was taking into account the fact that fundraising would defray some of this, or is the fundraising now an add-on for other things? And no, I think it's the fundraising would reduce this if it was the 3.8. Um, the capital campaign um, committee has the goal of $300,000. I feel comfortable in saying we have close to $100,000 without, with gifts and donations without even um, with it just beginning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I think it's very possible three hundred or more thousand dollars will be raised before we need the money. We're um, we're asking families and um, friends of our community to pledge 
um, for a three year period so that it would be broken over the three years um, once it's voted um, and but, in reality. But again, that would defray the cost of yes. whatever's asked for on town right. meeting floor. And when we talked about right. last time getting the $50,000 CERC desk as a donation. Okay. That's something that's in the budget, so right. that would be coming out. So those are the things that we're looking at our budget um, and with the help of our OPM and our architect um, because they helped write that budget knowing the fees. I think we just want to be clear that this is, mm -hmm. for lack of a better way to put it, kind of worst case financial scenario. It's the right and, and that's that's figure. To, and that's always the better way to do things, but yeah. I don't want, I want people to know that there are other. That's right. And I would just like to add that, that mm -hmm. even though, you know, when we set the goal for $300,000, the, the intent was to raise that amount of money by our October town meeting. So obviously our timeline is now compressed. Yeah. You know, we're, it, we'd be hard pressed to make that number by the end of the month. However, you know, just because we get to that goal whenever we get to it, hopefully we get to it in the fall, um, it doesn't mean that fundraising stops. We, now that we've kind of right begun this process it's something that we envision being an ongoing process that we can continue to you know see fundraising be a part of the you know part of the, the library's legacy that people can that people can well, it becomes more real. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. and that was my point and the two of this is that, that you know the library has not gone on town meeting and it hasn't been through a vote at the ballot yet it's a little premature, whatever you can get, is great, congratulations on it. But I think a lot of people financially will be looking for those two hurdles to be jumped before they, oh, definitely. they write a check and right. start sending the money in. So. Yeah. And there's other grant topics, some of the opportunity, private um, or through businesses that we are approaching. But I think that's, as Jerry said, reality sets in once the votes are done and people are willing to. This is really difficult for me to bring forward, but I'm going to do it anyways. Uh, it's quite obvious we need 1.8 million for the senior center, and I'm not advocating yes or no, but I'm just trying to lay down a scenario here. Okay, we need 900 thousand dollars for the library. That's 2.7 million dollars. Okay. Uh, when it comes to the land, that's 400 thousand, possibly. 200,000 from CPA money and 200,000 from debt exclusion, which would take care of that article. We have enough there to do that. Uh, now, how do we solve this situation? The way I look at this. You're not done, Donald. The fire substation. Oh, I'm getting there. That's the right. issue I'm getting to. I didn't forget it, believe me. And I've been on that fire substation from day one, yes, sir. visiting 20 places living across the street from it and what i've got to say is going to be very difficult for me to say but when we started this process the key was to provide the hadley fire department with adequate personnel and that's on everyone's agenda the finance committee select board and it's still on my agenda and i would have never worked so hard to propose the substation if i known ahead of time that we were not going to get the safer grant because that money should have been going to fulfill the personnel in Center Station. So maybe a way out of this to remain at the 9,500, we don't, $95 I mean. So we don't really know at this point if the people are gonna vote to purchase the land or not. So that's another hypothetical situation. I would hope maybe they would, but I don't know. My intent is with the $400,000 upload on the site in North Hadley, it's truly a waste of our money to go further with that site. It just doesn't make sense. If we give them another $810,000, they're going to build it on that site, pay the upload, and you're going to have there and be restricted probably. So maybe if there's a way to put the substation on hold, that's $2.9 million. That gives us the 2.7 for the library and for the council on aging, and it leaves us with approximately 200,000 to fund the fire department properly in that $95. I don't know if that can become reality, but I think that would be something that the taxpayer 
could equate to. And furthermore, on top of that, irregardless of what transpires with these four articles, we have 219 before us, the budget. And there's no way after jostling with all the figures and the finance committee and listen to everybody, there's no way we can come up with a balanced budget for 219 without a bona fide override, in my opinion. You know, and if we truly want to get an override accepted in this town, we have to come forth and tell them we worked our way out of this. Now, if you're accustomed to uh, having the services that we provide in this town, we need your help too now with an override. If, if you don't, then we'll do what you instruct to us and begin to cut our schools, fire police. And it's as simple as that in my mind. Donald, you're bracing yourself for a minute here? Sure. I completely agree with you. <gasps> yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Um, and if I can just tack on, I mean, what's been in, in my head, and I think it's been said before, I, you know, again, I'm, I'm not against the North Hadley substation. Um, initially, I had, I had a tough time getting my arms wrapped around the, the need. Um, but, you know, I, I know the fire chief felt very strongly about it, um, along with, with some other folks, and, you know, kind of got over that. But I think that moving forward with the land purchase, which I am in favor of, um, allows us to push the reset button. And the discovery to Donald's point that we've had since then is the fact that we did not get that safer grant. Um, that particular site, which was really more of my issue, is not working out. The impetus behind the sense of urgency was the fact that North Hadley Hall was potentially being sold and we didn't have anywhere to put some of the fire apparatus. I think that we've resolved that at this point. We've, you know, we've gone ahead and said, make whatever modifications you need to spend five or 6,000. Um, keeping North Hadley Hall up and running, I think will, will cost a little bit more, but it's still under our control. We haven't moved forward with the sale yet. So, you know, I would rather not rush into a substation, take it offline right now, and then look holistically at what is needed for Central Station, coupled with the possibility of a North Station. And could it be something less than a, you know, $3.3 .3 million project and still get the job done? Um, and, I, and I do think, I mean, at this point, the Senior Center and the library are, are much further along the way and and also moving forward with the library then allows for the movement um, it then will free up the well-maintained Goodwin Memorial building that will then allow for the relocation of some other departments including the DPW so I'm, I'm with you I mean I think we need to focus on fire personnel we need to make sure that the equipment is is uh, kept safe you know that it has proper housing that you know that, that we're not throwing million dollar trucks um, into barns but I'm, I'm willing to have that conversation but we've already had I'm just going to be the devil's advocate here sure. not that I don't agree with you but I also understand we've already gone to town meeting that we have um, had the vote from North Hadley residents that they would like to pursue to have a substation up there which they've always had um, it's been a proven fact that response time is better from North Hadley to the outskirts of, um, of the center station of where it is now to up into North Hadley to the farther. We're extending further and further out into uh, Shattuck Road. Um, but we wouldn't we and, wouldn't be taking it away. They mm -hmm. they would continue to be on the North Hadley Village Hall for the time being. See, I yeah, but for how but for how long? I mean, we've already condemned that building over and over again. I mean, we keep doing this with this North Hadley Hall. If we're not going to have the fire station there, and we're not going to put the substation there, and we're having intentions of putting it up on the other piece of property that we had intentions of doing, then comes way back to what we started two years ago in selling that piece of property, which was the will of town meeting again. So here we are back again at ground zero, let's put it. Uh, well, I think we're a little further along than that. I think that what we're talking about is adding the staff to bring a full-time fire department up, which is going to increase the, which is going to decrease yes. the, the times that it goes to. So whether or not we need the North Hadley substation, I think it's going to be something we'll need to discuss down the line as well as to what the, the real uh, uh, focus would be of the chief, okay? Um, I'm trying to get uh, a, a feeling as to the 
uh, committee that you folks are on uh, as to what you think the tenor would be for the committee because I think that they could actually be the driving force that brings this forward to us to understand it. The chief gets his, his people online, let's, let's assume that happens, um, and we um, go forward with that. Is there an absolute need for North Hadley? Do we need a $400,000 piece of property? Can we sell North Hadley Hall and put some of the money that we get generate from that into upgrading our center station so that it's a little more uh, accountable for the people that we're going to be having there? You're talking about an influx of a little bit of money. You're an influx of people coming forward, and I think a better response time, which I think is what the chief is. And I don't want to speak for the chief. I don't know how he feels about this, but I know he feels rather strongly. If he had, I think if he flipped the coin, I think he'd rather have the full-time department than the, the station in North Hadley. And I, again, that's me talking, not say, him. I think Mike's actually stated that out loud. Yeah, he's he has, stated yeah, that. In, in public meetings. Mm -hmm. so. And I have no problem with that. Yeah. You know, I've, I, I've been an advocate of uh, increasing our police and fire infrastructures for a number of years now. Now, is it devil's advocate or a regular advocate? A regular advocate. <laughs> 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 on the other side of the devil, I couldn't just, be a devil. She's on the other <laughs> shoulder right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've always been an advocate for that, saying that we've needed to increase and to protect our town with fire and police these years. We've upgraded our police. Um, to a nice uh, number that we have right now. Um, we've hired more full-time. Uh, we have a good number of part-time that uh, fill in. And, you know, that's, that's all settled. So it was time for us to work on the fire department and the staffing of it. So. Jane, do you have a question or a comment? Um, if you're talking about taking a block of money that was allocated for one thing and using some of it for other things, and one of those things would be fire personnel. I know in the long run he's looking to add four people. Why are you waiting and not just doing it all at once? You got the money in your back pocket? Right. Well, that's what we're saying. If you have the well, we money don't. from the fire station and you're going to allocate some of that towards fire personnel. Well, I think, Jane, that's the, that's the suggestion is that right. well, that's we would need to look at the impact on the debt and interest line item if we weren't fully. But those numbers would have to be rerun, and it won't be dollar for dollar. Right. Um, but I, th I think that's where we're going, and I, and I still see us this obviously having a significant conversation with town meeting. Can and I we're say having something? this conversation without the fire chief being here, yeah. so which is unfair to him also to um, make I, this decision. I was a firefighter for 20 years, and the time element can't be compared. If you have somebody full time at Center Station and they're there, they're gone. I worked. My store was right across the street from the fire station. We had pagers. I'd get my pager. By the time I got out of my store, just leaving everything, got a fire, into the fire truck. Then you got to wait for another fireman to come because you can't be driving down the road and lay a hose around a hydrant all by yourself. So what happens? I'm in the truck sitting there, and I see the Hadley truck go by me. So, you know, and that's when it's two volunteers responding to the same fire, and they still beat North Hadley sometimes. Mm -hmm. Not always, but sometimes. It's a unique situation, what occurs, and who is around the stations at the time. Well, years ago, when I first moved to town, and my husband, well, he's not a firefighter, but gosh, when the bell rang down there on West Street, everybody just dropped what they were doing, and they went to the fire to be of some service, whatever they can, and that doesn't, can't do that anymore. There's liability, and there's fire, exactly. you know, um, training that you have to do. It's state mandated now, so. Well, and I think what I'm hearing is what, what has been suggested, and what we're talking about is a reprioritization. Uh, I don't hear anybody saying that we're never, ever, not ever build a substation in North Hadley. I think we're just saying that some of those drivers that caused us to take the action that we did and make the recommendation from the Municipal Building Committee and others to make that the number one priority, to Jerry's point, I mean, there's a lot of information that we've gleaned along the way. And I, I think if that's presented to town meeting, you know, I, I'm willing to say, look at it, it makes sense to put this on the burner. Buy, buy the land and preserve a, a future home for it. But don't rush forward with the money right now because that money's better spent on um, these other projects and potentially personnel. David? Yeah, I was just going to comment that uh, we can repurpose money from one project to another. 
uh, you can't repurpose that money to for operational costs. No, but I, I think I think what I heard Donald saying, which is in my head, is debt and interest is a line item, right? And and what we've been talking about is keeping that debt and interest line item completely mm -hmm. level. We don't necessarily have to do that. We could keep it, you know, three quarters of the way up or whatever. And maybe these numbers don't work, but I, I think it's an idea worth yeah. pursuing. So are you saying, David, that the $2.9 million that's been allocated for the subfire station can be now reallocated to other projects? Yeah, with the timing, oh, you can do that, yeah. sure. Yeah, the, the, the actual borrowing part of that, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, the debt part of it. Yeah. But it's not like you, you have $2.9 million spent for operating over X number of years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back that's to the, the drawing board with it. Right, exactly. It, it would also require another ballot vote. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Hi, Hello. Well, you mentioned this. We didn't get the safer grant. Can you just remind me how much was that expected to cover? Two fire firms. Yeah, the cost of two fire was a hundred and something. For a two-year period with benefits, so I think it was north of two hundred thousand. Yeah, 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 definitely. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One thing I've been wondering, um, I'm still familiarizing myself with our five-year capital plan, but I believe that goes through 2020. And as we talk about trying to maybe look further out to level our debt service year to year, keep that around the 95 or at least keep it consistent, if we're pushing these projects back in order to do so in terms of how we fund it, when we borrow what, and especially if we put out the fire substation to a later date, mm -hmm. have we been taking into consideration our five-year capital plan and all the costs that, yes, we have you know, the debt service is going down because things are coming off, right. but presumably things should be coming back on because we've been planning. Yes. I understand that all these buildings are, it's a very rare occurrence for all this to happen mm -hmm. all at once normally mm -hmm. would be in that plan. So I was wondering maybe if Linda could speak to it or David, if in the calculations and how we're trying to think about this, yeah. if that's all that fit into it. Yeah, Linda, you want to talk about, you know, that part at the bottom, you know, your layer cake kind of? The, uh, the part that we've already, uh, that we already have in a bond, yeah. sure. But I think what I think what Gabe is going at, what happens when next time we need the the trucks and is that what you're talking about going right. forward right. when we need to have uh, get the yeah, and how the next trucks and school in. bus and yeah, yeah they're, well they're not specifically um, what we're paying off when I say that would we bring it forward and pay for a school bus and, and cruiser. I'm talking about things that we've already borrowed for. We this right. is past that we've already um, voted on. They've already been bought, they've been purchased, and um, th this is where it gets tricky when you say, well, how much is this going to cost? Like, how much will the backhoe cost? And you go, well, well it's $150,000, and this is what, it, what the impact will have a tax rate and a certain presumption over the next five years. In reality, that's one of the, that's one of the items that's getting paid off in the, in the first year. That, that will actually be paid off this year because it fits in very nicely because we didn't borrow as much for the buildings in 17 as we expected that we would. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we plan, but then it comes in. So as to how we are going forward, there's actually not a figure in there to, as a placeholder on that kind of capital. I think it was clear always when, or it was, we tried to make it clear when we were doing the borrowing last fall in the, in the plan, it was, for the, it was for everything that was already um, in the pipeline, we would already approved, and that was on that upcoming town meeting, which was a lot of capital items about a year ago, plus the, um, the 2.9 million for the library going forward. So those were all in there to get to the 95. Nothing more with the, nothing more was in that plan. So. But truth be told, if the increase for the senior center and the increase mm -hmm. for the library go in, mm -hmm. it, as Donald has said, offsets the expense of the fire station. There's no drop off. If that, under that plan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct. Depend, okay. Depending on, you have to factor Correct. time. Correct. I that. absolutely uh, understand. Yeah. But I think there does need to be another, I think Gabe's right that we do need another calculation of that kind. Um, I, I would like to, I, I have some thoughts on that going forward that I don't want to see us talk about trucks in terms of five years, uh, five year payoff. I would love, I would love to see, and this is another whole discussion, I would love to see us do, maybe do some kind of a, a plan, a, a dedicated override for capital, uh, 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 to f fund the capital stabilization fund so that we can pay X amount of dollars towards these vehicles each year, whether it's- You have that in the meals tax now. Well, um, Right, that's earmarked that, it, but right. it's not it really a, yeah, yeah, it's not 
Yes, it's theoretical. Yeah, so point. just just to amplify on that, uh, I have I have been putting together the five year capital update of the five year capital plan, and that's something that I hope to present to the capital committee when they meet on Monday. Um, we also have the, the new free cash policy, so if we can reduce our reliance upon free cash to pay for recurring operating uh, costs in the budget, that frees up free cash in order to start applying that to the uh, capital plan. Uh, so the first the first year of that we would have $75,000 if we stick to our plan for capital costs so we don't have to borrow as much as we have so and as we go forward in time as we reduce our reliance upon free cash for operational uh, purposes that'll mean more of it's available for capital purchases mm -hmm. so so for example for a forty thousand dollar police cruiser we won't have to borrow like we did last year we can just pay for that straight out of the cash mm -hmm. So where do, where do we want to go from here then, I guess, is my question. Can I ask another question, Madam Chair, before we do? I'm sort of confused about this a little bit. I know with the nine ballot questions that were voted to overrides and stuff, we're committed in many areas, the 400000 for the air conditioning at the school. Mm -hmm. But the SM4 grant, which was $390,000, and it was a federal mandate, now with EPA, has put it on hold for at least a year, if not more, or it may be gone forever. We don't know. What happens to that $390,000 that we're committed for and we're paying for? You never well, borrow. Yeah, we've borrowed it yet. Right? You haven't yeah, borrowed it yet. Borrow well, well, I thought we tax. borrowed a significant amount, though, no, she said to start the program. No, I think we only needed 17000 in order to make that first, uh, that first uh, goal. We only borrowed 200000 total. Yeah, but it's still in the overall well, picture. Town meeting, yeah. town meeting has approved, but it has not been borrowed. It's been earmarked, but it's not been borrowed. Okay, I see in that aspect, aspect yeah. then. Okay. Just, a, yeah. just a quick update. I got information yesterday. Yeah. Um, so MS4 is an EPA mandated item. Uh, it, it's got a one year stay. Um, but Mass DEP is like the statutory authority to kind of lead for EPA on this. So. The jury's out there of what DEPs do. Nobody can get an answer out of DEP right now. They're trying to figure it out from the Massachusetts level. So um, it's kind of out there, but these these um, court cases that are out there, they don't know how soon they're gonna happen. There, there's a, a remote possibility this falls right back into play. Uh, not that we would have to like meet the NOI tomorrow, but. Um, nobody really understands where DEP stands on this right now and, and, and did, like the signing authority for the whole thing. So um, we're all waiting answers for, for that right now. But I, I think we should be conscious and move ahead on some of the things that we should be doing anyway, which, um, which is, I think, a later discussion. I wanted to come in and talk to the board, but um, David and I have been talking about it. Uh, but that's the latest update I had. So you know, when that happened, it was sort of like uh, the federal government holding a guillotine above our heads. Right. Yeah. If we didn't adhere to it, we we're going to start paying fines of $18,000 a day. Yeah. So we had to react. Many communities in the Commonwealth didn't do anything. Right. You know, and they chose to take the fines, I guess, if it what became reality. Yeah. And that, you know, but we took a safeguard. Yeah. And I don't know. The 390 was for the five year, first five mm -hmm. years of the permit. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the first year was 85, I think it was. And it, the number's even lower now. It was like 55 from the engineering side, 35 from the town side or something. Okay, but we don't want to get hijacked on an MS4 permit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But something thank you for that. Um, so I'm just thinking in, in terms of next steps. I mean, I would think what makes the most sense is, I mean, you know, I, I know I would want to, I'm sure it's Donald's suggestion, we would want to look at the financial ramifications of that. Um, yeah. I would you know, think I'm, I'm Linda and finance our committee members' faces, and I don't think anybody, well, except the town, of course, is willing to say, "Yep, sign me up." Um, looks like you guys are all kind of. It's all new tonight. It's first, it has, first yeah. block. Right. right, and so a lot to think about. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, again, anything that we talk about at this point forward is just kind of speculative, and still until we actually see what the numbers might work out like. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. So What's a reasonable estimate for when, if we were to 
execute Donald's plan and not do the North Hadley Hall station, how long would it take to get some numbers down so we knew what the benefit or, of that plan would be? Linda, you're working most closely with David Eisenthal. Yeah. Could that be a what? scenario too? Right. Well, um, if it's a if you're trading 2.9 million for 2.9 million, we're done. Right. <laughs> because it, the, I mean the, these these items that we purchase turn into money, and and so we're borrowing the same amount of money. Basically, we're back as just exactly what Donald said. You're back within that ninety-five dollars. Well, that yeah, but I think it, it doesn't difference. take into the, the time. timing of the cash flow would have to be adjusted. The time and the cash flow would be adjusted, but we would continue to pay at that same amount back each year to keep us at that level Got that we agreed okay. on. Okay, so we would continue yeah. to pay. We're paying about one. Uh, our, our jump was, I think, eight something in 800 to about over, we're paying about $1.1 $1 million a year, and we're going to keep paying that back, and the less that we're actually borrowing for or putting off other borrowing for, more of that money is going to principal than interest. But we're going to keep that amount up because that was, I mean, that's what you all decided last fall, that you wanted that flat scenario. When is Mike back? Where's your what? When is Mike back? Two weeks. When is Chief Spank Naval back? Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to remember that. Yeah. Is it the beginning I part of next week? Tuesday. Yes, Tuesday. Tuesday. Because he worked on Monday. Yeah. So the, these are all debt exclusions. So you're saying, okay, we'll, we'll get, get back the $2.9 million for not building the North Hadley substation, and then we can afford the library and the other things that we want to build. But that still doesn't take into account salaries for firemen. Right? Because that you can't borrow money to pay for salaries of the land. Right. Right, and that's why I was trying to figure out if there was any way, for the sake of argument, you know, somebody's got a mortgage payment of $2,000 a month and they hit the end of their 30-year mortgage period and suddenly they no longer have a $2,000 principal and interest payment. So they've freed up $2,000 a month of cash flow. Are we, I was trying to figure out, are we recommitting to $1,500 and we have 500 that could be redeployed elsewhere that could theoretically go to other operating well, line items? Well, it was an even But swap. it sounds like the answer to that is no. So we still have to come up with the money from somewhere else to pay the firemen. Yep. And, and we still don't know an accurate figure of what these buildings are going to cost us in expenses for heating and whatever regular maintenance to keep up. With the new ones? With the new ones, and still carry the old ones. Well, the only, it, I know on the library, um, it, just for my participation on the building committee, that question was asked repeatedly, and if anything, DA Sullivan has said that your, your theoretical building carry costs could be reduced because they're so much more efficient. And the library at this point has gone on record saying you're not interested in increasing staffing. Correct? I mean, we're not, no, not, for, not because of an increase in square footage in the building. We make those decisions right. based on how many hours we're open, how many people we're serving. Right. So that's, that's how we evaluate but those decisions. And again, I mentioned this last time, David, and, and the, the senior center, I think, is in a different position um, because they did articulate that they likely would be coming back looking for an increase in their operating budget vis-a-vis -vis staff. But I don't, it's not like oil, heating, and electric and all these things. It's that's actually so much less than the Hooker less. School. Okay. So for you're looking building. for <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. If it's for new employees or. Or what have you. And there's always, anyone who owns a house knows that there's always something that needs to get done. Yeah. Even in a new building. So. Really which which is getting that. into the fall conversation of, so, you know, the overall budget. I think our new, our new buildings will be less expensive to operate mm -hmm. than our older buildings. Yeah. And more comfortable, temperature-wise. Mm -hmm. So how do you fund uh, for fire, fire, for the fire department? Well, if, if we're going to jump into that conversation, then I'm still at a point where I think that we need to find ways to reduce our ongoing operating costs. And if we can't find the money to fully fund that, and I still feel very strongly about information technology and human resources, although I think that could be somewhat staggered over time, um, meaning that you don't necessarily have to fund the full boat right now. I think we still have a lot more exploration to do, at least on IT, that you kind of fund. 
enough to keep us moving forward. Um, you know, I, I like the idea of, of pursuing some existing cost reductions, but I don't think we're going to fully get there without asking for more operating money in the form of an override. Based on, I mean, the conversations we've had about <coughs> that, assuming that at this point, we don't know if we're going to get an override. And so exactly. we all, I feel that we are all supportive of the safety of this town, mm -hmm. and we need to find out how we're going to support that without an override. So yeah, so for our conversation last week, this is nothing new. Um, it's just a handout kind of detailing the figures that we went over when we discussed uh, parks and recreation and the health insurance for part time elected officials. Um, just so adding the committee's language to it and then having those figures so you can see them. Um, so to briefly go over, there's been an update when it comes to the health insurance, uh, but for the parks and recreation, the number that we were looking at, again, is a total potential savings um, high in the sky, uh, $66,000 in, in cost savings. Um, of course, when you move responsibilities for parks maintenance over to BDPW, there would be costs associated with that. Um, when you, you know, eliminate the coordinator position and have the youth library youth coordinator take over those responsibilities, uh, whether you're looking at a slight bit of overtime or reduced service or bringing in uh, a contractor, there will be some costs associated with that. So we don't fully expect the 66000 just just you know, magically the full amount that we get back. But then health insurance, we actually got an update on. So Terry, if you want to talk to that. Well, so Jerry asked for the minutes from 2010. I got them. So, Thank you. Um, David nicely gave them to all of us and if you want me just I want to read this one paragraph so I understand it right I read Jerry you were on board this time yeah, and so so I was in Joyce and I did speak to Brian West today so it said Brian West noted the finance committee suggested that individuals presently receiving insurance benefits be advised that at the end of their present term coverage would terminate should that individual seek and be re-elected to the same office for an additional term the benefits would terminate at the end of five years or no later than may 1st 2014. so i'm reading that as that they should have already been off the health but i insurance. think you have to keep reading because i was on finance committee then and it said they also advise new candidates to be advised the positions they seek no longer include insurance benefits yeah and that was the recommendation from the finance committee, Terry. Mm -hmm. But if you, but I, then I, I read it after um, you and I had spoken about that. If you keep reading what the actual vote was, it's three one and one. So what is the, the actual vote was to keep them? It said it was Dan Dukavitz moved and Brian West seconded for the provisions of the blah blah thirty two section that only covered part time compensated elect officials are eligible to receive health benefits and our grandfather. As far as long as each incumbent remains in their yeah, pre position. present office, right? But to discontinue health insurance eligibility for all part-time compensated. Okay, so also going forward, up above, it was previously voted that the elective officials from another board mm -hmm. prior to this that mm -hmm. there would be no more health insurance through the town. Mm -hmm. Correct. So in my reading that you already had some a board vote for that and then whatever reason it didn't happen and then came back again so we're continually saying here that we're thinking for cost savings that the insurance should no longer be offered to elected officials part-time elected officials so again that would save us 60 as 60,929 yeah 60,929 cost savings per year mm -hmm. So, I mean, if it was thought about five years ago or in 2010 and then prior to that as well, and the finance committee, our finance committee voted on agreeing that it should be eliminated. Um, so that's, that's a firefighter's salary and not quite their benefits. That's right. right there. So we went through the budget. I mean, there's not much fluff in any, any one of these budgets that you can cut things from. At the end of the day, you're going to be replacing uh, non-essential services with essential services. And 
that might mean that other budgets need to be cut as well to get to the 219 for the fire department. But I think we have to plan for the fact that the town may not vote for an override. And we can explain to the town, look, if you want to keep all of these services, and I think that we should uh, you know, go down that road, but if they vote against it, then we have to have a plan in place to get those fire, you know, it seems to me completely irresponsible to ask the fire chief to work with volunteers while, you know, Park and Rec has got paid positions. So moving forward, I think from a purely financial standpoint, we've found the opportunities that we would think would be most cost efficient for minimal impact on the services that the town provides. So moving forward, I think that the override discussion we should have soon and often, and it should obviously the tri board should be involved in that. I think what the finance committee would like is some direction on for our plan B, where we should be looking if services have to be reduced, where we should be prioritizing looking on how to cut things, frankly, because I think that's more of a substantive policy, you know. Yeah. Debbie, can I just ask a, a question um, in terms of the departmental rollbacks? And, and first of all, I want, before I even this comes out of my mouth, I want to be very clear that when people are managing departments and they manage it so well that they've budgeted for unforeseen, but through acts of God or whatever, we don't wind up with the police overtime, we don't wind up with uh, overtime the DPW. I've got Marlo right, right there, I can see. <laughs> but, you know, when the department managers do a good job managing and they're able to turn that money back, Okay, that's, that's a good thing. We want to keep that going. We want to encourage that. We want to right. encourage that. But there are some other um, esti uh, management estimate line items that may or may not wind up being incurred. So I'm just going to ask just on the employee benefits line item, that's a pretty big nut. Do you mm -hmm. have any sense of what rollback, if any, came from that line item? Uh, I think we have some, well, none of them went into the red, I don't believe. Is that right, Linda? Uh, workers' comp came closest. Work, yeah, they came we, closest. Yeah, actually did go into so the red, So I think we, we got about 25000 back on veterans' benefits. I think we got another ten or 20 coming back on workers' comp, no, of uh, unemployment. Uh, and uh, uh, I didn't mean workers' comp. I meant unemployment. Okay, it was one of the other. Yes, unemployment comp. is the right. one that actually went twenty-five thousand right. over budget. And then we, we have the then we have some coming back on health insurance. Do you know what that sum is? I don't. Do you do you have a I, sense? I don't of? recall what it, okay. what yeah. it was. And the reason I'm asking yeah. the reason I'm asking mm -hmm. is in the past again, knowing from many conversations over the years. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not that the town pads that, it's just that if you don't know when you hire somebody if they're going to take it reasonably, right. we always try to make sure that there is a cushion in that line item. And right. historically, fairly consistently, there has been a little bit of give up there. And I'm wondering if you know we can look at kind of maybe reducing the budget of the amount in some of those areas. Madam Chair? Yeah. I don't profess to be a barrister, and I don't want to be one, but uh, I think her point was there's enough of confusion here. If this was issued on January 20th, 2010, five years brings it to 2015, and then it wouldn't be issued anymore, health insurance. Yeah, but I know there's that other things. But I think there's enough of confusion here that it should be sent to town council for an update to look at this and give us an opinion. I don't think that that's relevant anymore, Donald, from the standpoint that clearly those people have been continuing to get the benefits. I think what's what's a question is do we put it on the table now and take a vote to officially eliminate that once and for all? So that but if it's wrong, question. it doesn't make it right to let them continue. No, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm more than happy to put it up for a vote anytime you guys are ready to vote and say we need to just be done with it irregardless, or regard, regardless of... ...for every rock, <laughs> you know, and it's our responsibility, you know, to make those tough decisions. They're not easy. I agree, but we got to make them. Yeah, I just want to just want to clarify that the select board started working on this in September 2009. They came up with various proposals. They were all vetted by uh, town council. It came down to cho two choices: you can either cut off well, three choices. You can cut off uh, part-time elected officials' health insurance right then and there, uh, with no exceptions, or you can have some sort of sunset provision, which is the, what you're talking about. 
or you can have some sort of a grandfathering provision that uh, the people who have it continue, but the people who come in afterwards don't uh, aren't eligible for the benefit. So that was the select board's vote. Of the three choices, they chose the grandfathering, not the sunset provision. So, you know, I know that the minutes say uh, that it's sunset, but that's not where the vote uh, was taken. It was taken on the grandfathering. Is there any further research required on this? I mean, there are any legal issues? Could we theoretically take a vote on this? Uh, the you couldn't take it tonight because you need to post it. Yeah, right. But yes, you can take a vote, and it's entirely within the select board's jurisdiction to take that vote. I'm happy to put it on the agenda next week, and, and have a discussion. You won't be here again next week. I mean again. <laughs> <laughs> I never missed a meeting. He forewent, foregone, foregone, whatever the word is. His uh, vacation to be with us last time. He did. He did. Okay. He did. Okay. Um, okay. But anyway, I'm, I'm more than happy to put that on huh? the agenda. Oh, oh, as as if Terry was to read the results of the vote, Divine voted to abstain on that because I was getting it at that time. And I didn't feel I didn't feel it was fair for me to vote one way or the other. I abstained. No, I can vote. read that if you want me to. No, no, no. Just I, feel it's important. I fessed up to it. And in the spirit of the fact that this this is, is a tri board meeting, um, at this point, you know, looking at Heather too, and and at this point, we haven't heard anything in particular from the schools, um, other than we know the conversation that took place during the budget season last time about the concern about you taking additional funding out of school choice that was making you uncomfortable. So I'm hoping that, that soon we'll, we'll have that roll forward of school choice um, to figure out where you guys wound up and what you right. think you might be, you know. Yeah, we'll have that. We'll have that from Chris at our next meeting, which okay. I know I which is the twenty eighth. Yeah, I misspoke. It actually starts at five thirty uh, instead of six because we are going to the CPA meeting right after for their seven o'clock uh, to talk about the athletic fields. And that's on the 28th or the, the 14th 28. is the performance review and the 28th yeah. is the regular business meeting? You got it. Got it. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. Can, can, we, can we get a summary yeah, on what's going to happen at CPA? Sure. Um, I can get you a summary and I'll confer with Paul uh, who's been overseeing that with Annie. But the idea is that uh, we intend to present to them um, the fundraising opportunities that we are laying out, the plans in terms of costs over time for the athletic fields, uh, and to ask them for funding, which I know uh, you've got on your October draft um, warrant uh, for $400,000. What's that funding for? Is that design funding or is it is something being done? That's right? actually phase one okay. of the athletic fields. The design is already set. Yep. Uh, and Part of the $15,000 ask that we had last time that they mm -hmm. gave us was to um, make those plans more detailed, to have that phased rollout approach by um, basically by year and with costs associated with each of those phases. So that was part of the breaking out of the plan that we had last time. This is to fund actual development. I hear a tremendous amount of support for this, and I'm glad the schools and CPA were able to work out and hopefully work out all the details regarding the usage of the town and the advantage of having this go forward. So we are too. We're looking forward to working with Getting them and done. also presenting some ideas around fundraising as well. Great. Okay. Here, one more quick thing. Gabriel, we mentioned the insurance and the also the park and recreation uh, <clears throat> changes. So what is the select board's thought on, on that? Well, again, it's another um, area that certainly can be looked at in some degree. Um, I would like somebody from Park and Rec to be here. Um, not that I'm saying that it's wrong, but I could see, I'm not sure we haven't even, we discussed it with the library about them taking on as the youth coordinator either. That's a different job for them what they've already entailed over there so have you well, approached excuse, have you we, approached we the library that. at all no we haven't done that yet so I, okay. we can do that but we looked at it as youth coordinator yeah. yeah it's youth programs all the sport activities are done by uh separate um parent run organizations 
So I was surprised at the the hourly rate. The I other thing say is, that. is the urgency of hiring a full time employee versus maybe a part time consultant, which is a non benefit mm -hmm. you know position. Mm -hmm. And so I know they're looking to hire somebody full time, but can that be changed to a non benefit position and with part time hours to work hand in hand with maybe the library? Mm -hmm. right, the original thought was that. That if libraries already running children's programs, you right. have it all under one, you know, in the in the spirit of shared responsibilities, mm -hmm. you have one children's program center instead of two. So again, we're glad to look into it if the select board thinks it's promising. Um, you certainly, the, you could carry on your conversation. I feel, don't you? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. and again, my my concern, as I said this before, I. You know, we, we have an opportunity because there's been natural turnover before we go ahead and put somebody on the payroll at a relatively attractive rate with, with you know, potentially the benefits. Um, I, I think as long as this is out there, we have to exhaust this before we pull the trigger on that. So I'm very comfortable saying, you know, I, I do not want to move forward with that hire until we know exactly what our talking points are for fall town meeting and i fully support the fact that it's not a slam dunk that there would be an override approved i'm more than happy to make the argument for it for human research and be very specific about many things we've talked about but if it doesn't fly i'm not willing to turn around to public safety and say sorry we tried and if God forbid anything happens and somebody cannot get to a fire because we didn't have call force personnel or I I don't want to be in this chair the day that that or, might happen. So. Or if the chief was stuck looking at a burning building because he was standing there by himself. himself. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I With the park and rec, I, I like the park and rec and this is really, really difficult because mm -hmm. we use it all the time with my family it, and it's uh, I liked what Missy had to say. All those mm -hmm. things at the meeting so I find it very difficult but it's the time is up to look at it yeah. but I cannot support at the same time these other non-essential services such as the senior and the library and increasing that in any way if I were looking at decreasing this it feels like you know I mean the, the children um, I feel are just as important and some of these services are just as important as some of the others such as the library mm -hmm. um, I think it's great that we have that um, that grant I don't want to throw away that kind of money but I can't don't feel like we could in my opinion I don't feel like I can support giving money to some of these others with taking away from this yeah. but I think that's why the suggestion to see if there's any way to, to do some absorption um, and I, I also say that I want to put words you know speak on behalf of the schools but but back when you know many years ago there was actually a movement on the part of the schools to try to take take some of that programming in just because of all the shuffling around of, of building space and everything mm -hmm. um, it was more sports oriented at the time but the, the thought on the part of the school was that if they could get some of the money in, it was actually helpful to them so n not not right. making a commitment on your behalf, but it might be a conversation to have with the schools as well, that between the library, the seniors, and the schools, if we could keep at least, you know, the um, popular programming going, mm -hmm. and then it's just that we're not expanding it greatly, but our people have choices for park and rec, which they don't have for fire department, or even the libraries. It's not realistic that people will say, okay, forget the good one, we'll go to Northampton and Amherst. You know, we're park and rec programming, LSSC, Northampton Rec, so many people participate anyway, you know? Right, right. Well, and I think it's um, just as a point of fact, if we don't have a library, I think our citizens are not eligible to use the neighboring town libraries. Yeah, that's right, mm -hmm. right, that's right. Yeah. So to clarify on timing, because we've been wondering about this, um, we originally thought of, you know, the Custom Parks and Rec as a Plan B, yes. but we acknowledge that due to the, the turnover right now, this was a conversation to be having right now. Um, but I hear you say that we could possibly wait on the hire until the fall town meeting, whether the override passes or not. So that'd be a number of months away. Well, well, what I'm saying is, 
I mean, me right now, I, I would vote to say this is the direction we're going in and, and we'll address it down the road, you know, that, that this is a choice that is appropriate for us to be making. But I'm also quite conscious of the fact that there are other people who feel very differently and I think that they should have an opportunity to advocate. But for me, I, I, I'm ready to vote on these two right now because I think it's the right thing to do given where we're at in town. Um, regardless of the override. Regardless of the override, because I think we need to start, I, again, I, schools haven't come in yet, you know, sure. that, and I'm sure that there are other things that are going to come up, and we don't want to turn around and keep going back for an override for this and an override for that and an override for right. that. We, we would rather we wait get, and get... can't get one override in yet, mm -hmm. you know, never mind yeah. asking for <laughs> several. Never had one. Exactly. <laughs> Right. We've never so, had an override can you ask for operational. Right? So you ever asked for one? Didn't have to. Okay. The select board has to approve the hire. Yeah, that's the only way you're going to get it on is the select board okay. and override. Well, I just think that somebody yeah. should notify I've them. I've got a question about the 66K. Have they calculated in the figure what it's going to cost the highway department now to maintain the park? in this well, town this so is it actually 66k or let's subtract what marlo's department's going to inherit now and what is the actual well, savings the park 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 do anything with park. Mm -hmm. and no but never... the ball fields have to be maintained mowed and everything it's and the highway that. department is doing that no. with an additional cost to his budget no, he not. doesn't do it free no, it's, it's already being done now. It's already being done. The highway department doesn't do anything with the baseball fields. Of course they do. They mow North Hadley Field every time. Nobody uses Nobody does that. It doesn't matter. They're still obligated to do it. And right, there's no line item for maintenance in there. So, I don't know. Do you have a figure how much, you know, when we voted that at town meeting? That How much additional it put to your budget, Marlo? Are, are we talking only as a third of our care? There is no, he has no line item to deal with for parks. We, I just, but we, the last few added. meetings you said the highway department is going to inherit the parks and take care of the parks. Thank you you said that time and time again. And there's always a cost figure when you inherit anything. So you're talking about Zaturka Park, I think. Zaturka right? Park, yeah. yeah. Any yeah. land yeah. that we yeah. hold, the common is a park. Yeah. But we maintain are, that. Well, we have to. Yeah, but they're already property. <laughs> Yeah. But so, but Don, oh, sorry, there's no line item in park and rec now for maintaining grass, right? That's good. So, so it's solely programs you're saying? Yes. Right. Okay. Right. So I not, didn't know that. That's where I needed clarification. Okay. I thought they had Probably a line item grass. that they <laughs> used for maintenance of fields and everything no, too. No, no, okay, no. fine. That's that clarifies it. Okay. It's first. not even. Uh, it's not even programs because they're programs. They bring in money, and their expenses for the programs is like a wash. So those, the sixty thousand is for. If you want the actual breakdown, I can tell you. you have to find it. It's in the big book. It's in the big book. Do you know what page is? Salaries, the assistant, the coordinator, the assistant coordinator, mileage. Go ahead. No, no, I was just. Oh, mileage. I was listening. I have to find you. No, I'm still confused. I don't know. Maybe David can clarify this well, for me. The state law on park and rec commissioners, are we required to have park and rec commissioners for our parks? No. No. So you know, if we eliminate required. park and rec, the commissioners are eliminated. We would have to go back to town meeting, town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. to do it. They're elected officials. We've been yeah. over we, have, this. we would have to dissolve it by a vote of town meeting. Okay. So kind of like you did with the sewer commissioners. Yes. Yeah, same thing. So we would put that on um, likely as a warrant article for the fall. Okay, well, I can't find the date. So then there's right. substantial savings. Yes. Because you're referring to the insurance again. You're mm -hmm. referring to the that's elected one. official's payment. You can't double dip on that. There's only one part time, and that's in the first line item yeah. on the yeah. right. second one. That's already been figured in on the first one. Yeah, so. it's not in both. Yeah, Correct. Both Correct. Lines. The only thing that's not in, though, the Park and Rec budget is the cost of health insurance for the full-time coordinator. Right. So in that $60,000 does not include 
No, because it's on a whole separate line item. Oh, it okay. depends on what. The benefits are in the insurance So line it's item. actually more than sixty thousand dollars. If you make it yeah. sixty-six, it'll page make 80. it a page eighty. It'll make it a. Um, we work as a team. A non-benefit <laughs> position. So you have salaries for park and rec uh, commissioners are thousand fifty. The coordinator salary is forty two thousand seven thirty six. Part time clerical is sixteen thousand six thirty seven. School use for custodial is forty five hundred. Tuitions and fees two hundred. Office supplies fifteen hundred. Mileage two twenty five. Equipment purchases which is twenty five hundred. So that was all budget which is for what, 9,000 to 14,000, maybe, something, something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. So you're talking $80,000 there, on top of the 60,000, 61,000 roughly for the uh, health insurance, and that is substantial for- um, You get halfway to your fire room. Yeah, the line item that I brought up for the maintenance and the DPWs is if you look, he has no line it seems to me that we should have a focused <laughs> agenda <laughs> item at a select board meeting to discuss park and rec before we, you know, and then um, we also already talked about the uh, health insurance. Okay, we're right? back up. Yay. So should we schedule, Yay. would people be comfortable scheduling that <laughs> as an agenda item at a future select board meeting? Or does that, I mean, I guess if anybody feels very strongly that this needs to be taken off the table and not be discussed, then say so. Yeah, I, I don't think it should be on the table. I think we should leave it through the uh, budget season that we have now. Park and Rec, we ask them to come back in and make a presentation as to what their thoughts are and to go forward. I thought they had a great presentation um, with some very important things. Now, I, I understand we're looking for money. I absolutely understand that. But um, I, I think through at least 18 or through our budget season that we're in right now, I don't want to pull the rug out from underneath these people after we voted on town meeting for to give them a budget. For this year, I don't think that's fair. So, can we just ask that maybe right, you change the position to rather than taking on a full time employee because we are unsure of what's going to be happening, that you make it a private consultant position? I, so, I, 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 we have elected officials that are in charge of running their department. I don't think we should be directing them as to what they do as long as they fall within their budget. And I think they're doing their job. That's what I'm asking them to do. Okay, so that's fine, I and mean, that's how you feel. Correct. Just don't waste our time. We're here looking for money for a full-time fire department, so if we don't want to proceed. I said through this budget period that we have committed to that. But we also know that in 19, we, we are going to be facing hard times when it comes to money. So this is something that we can't keep pushing off. It but needs I to be dressed as they come along to us. But I think... We've had for uh, a short period of time a misconception that when people are hired within this town, that they don't get hired at the position um, of what that person who left Previous. previously, that you're automatically hired at that position to what you that you get appointed to or you're, um, you're in. I think, I don't think anybody who should come in after 25 years or 30 years of experience should have not even that long a time, but if somebody's been in a position for 10 years, why would, I mean, not even any workplace would do that, where you would hire somebody at the same pay scale as the one going out would be coming in. I mean, I mean, you know, we've had this uh, conversation come up over and over again. Um, no company would do that. No company would do that. I mean, not even if you're a, a veteran nurse, do you come in at the high rate of what somebody else is when they've been there for 30 years? You, you don't, it isn't, it doesn't happen. So how did it happen? Well, can I, can I? Well, that's what I'm asking. Can, I, I'm, I, I'm with you. I want to know how it happened. I asked and it was brushed off. So okay, I mean, can we, can we pull the conversation back, yes. back up a sex? So sex? <laughs> sex. <laughs> sex. <laughs> I think just in terms of, I mean, a, a question was asked that I think everybody should respond to first, and, I, and that question was, do you think it is a good idea to go into the fall looking for an override and not have a plan B 
in the event that the override fails. So the Finance Committee is proposing that we, and forget this for a minute, just bigger picture, that we go into the fall, that we're planning on making an ask, and there's still all of the details of that hasn't, haven't been worked out yet, but if the ask fails, that we should then have a plan B because it would not be the most prudent decision on the part of the town to continue with the fire force structured the way it currently is. We definitely so, need a plan B. Right. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, you guys have been clear. I'm, I'm um, looking at looking. So um, Heather okay. is nodding her head in agreement. It's always that, helpful to have a contingency yeah. plan. Well, so, plus the I, voters need to know. I, that's right. I, I, you got two you, hands. You've been one. very clear. I'm, I'm asking the rest of the select board. So I've done work. I'm asking. I don't want to be in the fall trying to figure this out. Right. I'd rather have a figure that out now. Out. What the options are and bring that forward because that will help in people making their decision. Okay. So Jerry, Joyce, and Donald, how do you feel about that? I'm always. I'm an advocate for A and B. Okay. Joyce wants an A and B. Donald. I, do that with my uh, I don't think the select board should be uh, micromanaging elected officials. I agree with Jerry. No, I, I, I'm that. just asking, I said, for, forget these, this for now. Just do you think that we need to have a plan B? If plan A fails. Oh, definitely. Right. We're going to have to. We have no recourse. So we I think we should have an absolute plan B. Exactly. I think that's, that's we should okay. be looking I at something on ambulance way. service as well. I think we should be Down looking at that as a potential cost savings Wait, opportunity. <laughs> So, okay, we, that's, job. so uh, we are just looking at things that we know are for sure right now. And I don't know where I haven't sat in on any ambulance meetings. I don't know where the thought of this, right. of that, but. Right now for this year, we have a contract for the remainder of this fiscal year. Come the following year, um, we've um, the select board voted to go ahead and put out a request for proposal. The request for proposal hasn't gone out yet. Um, we did give notice to Amherst. The Amherst has been put on notice, but it should be going out. We're waiting for the fire chief to finalize some things um, so that David can get that out the door. When that proposal goes out, we will be looking for a replacement for, um, you know, whether Amherst continues with it, they, they respond, whether it's a third party that comes in. Are we going to save money? Is that what you're saying? Well, the, the potential cost savings would be that somebody comes in and says okay we're not going to charge you anything and we're going to provide ambulance coverage for you that could happen and that would be a hundred and forty thousand there's the other one hundred and forty which is we're we're 165 paying. now aren't we no no 135 goes up five every year yeah. but that cost savings wouldn't wouldn't come to fruition until the following fiscal year so it, it wouldn't have any impact on now it would be a possible savings in the future, and we're not likely, when well, we might know that by fall town meeting, although I think that's gonna be cutting it close. So my next question would be is, how long do we wanna wait to be able to give the fire chief what he needs for a full-time fire I'm, I'm just, Jerry put something on the table, yeah. you asked a question, so we're just laying that out. What does that look like? That looks like a potential future cost uh, we savings. We don't know how long that will take. Well, we have a year contract right now. Right. So do we want to wait a year to see if that falls through that we could take that money and use it for a fire department? We we would know it probably, I would say by fall town meeting, okay. that we would have the RFP out. The RFP will yes. be out. I don't we'll think we'll out. have a recommendation by the, the but fall But we should be meeting. in the process. It should by spring, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, by spring, spring for spring. sure. So, so here's a question then again for plan B, are people willing to hold off on staffing fire until the next annual town meeting? No, but there's other opportunities for where you draw money from as well. So Whether what? it's OPEB or something else that well, you need. Well, we've already borrowed from OPEB. You've taken a piece of OPEB. Well, and that was the objection to the treasurer already. Right. She didn't even she didn't like that we were going to try and backfill with free cash to <laughs> keep out of her wrath over there. <laughs> She's looking at it, Tom. <laughs> we're trying to put it back. Free <laughs> cash. She's looking in the back of your head. Yeah, I know. That's the problem. It's a little red dot there now. <laughs> what do we have for free cash? Thank the you. Fall? All right. So back in January, I said 
it'd probably be around 500,000. I'm still comfortable with that number. When is that going to be actually certified? It's supposed to be certified in the middle of August. Okay. You keep pushing. Yeah. And so then I also wanted to bring up a plan that's there now is only half a plan B. That's right. Mm. We need the other half. That's right. 50. So. Well, so I think in terms of approach, I, I think what I hear Jerry saying is, and Jerry can, you can smack me or say, don't you talk for me. But Joyce, take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what you're talking about is trying to come up with immediate actual cost savings from the current budget so that when those changes are made, those dollars are available and they're for, available for perpetuity, meaning it's, it's right. off the books. What Jerry's talking about is an approach that we have taken in the past and we've take, we, we have said, okay, we can find these dollars and we're gonna add this um, obligation on our books but then deal with it six months later in the Springtown meeting when people have had the opportunity to look more at all of this. You're nodding your head, so did I get that right? I absolutely okay. understand that. Okay, so this is like a, um, you know, try to, to plug it now, and, but then you're kind of deferring it into the future. You guys well, are saying we're, we're not really looking to defer it. And I, and I, I think those are kind of the two I mean, approaches. What are you so hiring these guys? Well, according to the fire chief, he's in an emergency situation right now. That's right. Right now. <laughs> you know, if he could, if he could hire somebody tomorrow, he'd be. That would make the chief very happy. But right now, he's in a situation where he needs two firemen outside for two firemen to go inside, and he just doesn't have the people. So he goes and he has to wait for Amherst or Northampton to show up before they can even start working on a fire. Right. And maybe, it, maybe it's a hybrid approach. Maybe we do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But what I'm not hearing anybody say is, I know exactly where we can get this money. Yeah. Um, well, that's and I that's think that's the point that you guys are making. You've already gone through the entire budget. I mean, at this point, we would just, you know, we would have to cut other non-essential services. And it would be deep cuts, because we've got to come up with another hundred and some thousand dollars, even after those cuts. Right. Okay. In right. The, sort of. Sorry. To, uh, to restate, um, we looked at these originally as Plan B. You know, assuming an override doesn't pass to fully fund fire. The urgency on the Parks and Rec was because there was turnover now. So that's why we were right. requiring something later. to do now before we make a permanent change. But this was looking forward, not immediate. That was the urgency in that. And we still identified the hundred thousand dollars shortfall to fully fund fire, even if this half of a plan B went forward. While ambulance certainly seems promising, I hope that you know, pans out well. Potential. Potentially. Um, we would like some guidance in the meantime between now and fall town meeting on where else we can look. Because financially speaking, this seemed the most prudent, the, the smallest impact to service for the most savings. But if we're talking about cutting services, we need some guidance on where it would be appropriate to look. Well, I, I think instead of trying to go for the big apple here, we're going to take a piece of it. And I think that you should go to have an override for explicitly the fire department and not try to get more than what we actually need to do. Because everybody seems like in this room that it's the most important thing right now and everybody's top of their mind is to enhance the fire department for at least day coverage so that we're covered. Um, so if we're going to go to town meeting, we're going to ask for, I'm just going to say 250, um, and have that as a, what would that be in, in um, what would that be for, is that a what would that be for percentage individual? for Dan, an increase? You had your a million dollars in operating override is? Uh, 250 would cost about $81 a year. For the average? For the average house. house. That's on top of the 91 ask for the... And the prop two and a half override. But if, <laughs> the, if, if you take off the substation... No. No, if you take off the substation and the library and the senior center... They're picking the dollars up. That handles the Warren articles, yeah. basically. Yeah. Right. But my question, I guess, is... Okay, David just said in the ballpark, 500000 Plus or minus a little bit, but maybe. But this isn't going. The 250 isn't going to be. Excuse me for just one minute. 250 is not going to be 
off the books. It's going to be a permanent fixture exactly. as a right. tax Forever. dollar. Yeah, that's right. Whereas your ninety-five dollars will go down in debt as time goes on. But to me, correct. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah. yeah. Until we until we buy another I'll building. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. yeah. <laughs> it's permanent for you. To <laughs> it's okay. to me, to look at the <laughs> they're going to pay and how much they can afford. A lot of these fixed incomes, they can't afford that. That's why I'm not, I don't feel strongly about the override going through. And so this is why we're trying to find alternatives to make this full right, but, we're, but we're going to try the override. I think we should. Oh, we, do, uh, we absolutely have to, yeah, try, have the to try the override. We have to try the override. But I'm not going for a million dollar override. I'm telling you that right now. I won't even vote for that. No, I don't think anybody's talking. What well, we've been talking about up until this point is we've been talking about the fire personnel, we've been talking about information technology and human resources. Right. We're talking maybe a couple of hundred thousand dollars more for those two functions, not another 800,000. So I'm, I'm not going to go with HR and IT right now. I think the most important thing right now is the fire department. Mm. I, yes. I agree, but I also I agree I'm with not you too, go, Joyce. I'm but my, my problematic else. area is we're talking about 219 now. I could care less about 219 at this point. I'm concerned with 218. We got 500,000 in free cash. How is that going to work towards the 18 budget? Are we going to have enough money? Are we going to be looking for money elsewhere to balance 218? That is my question to you people, and I think we are. And where are we going to get that money? Are we going to ask it to come from stabilization to balance 218? You know, what would your advice be on this? I don't know. That's what I'm having a real problem with. I'm concerned about 218 and why? getting an operating budget for 218 in hand. And at this point, we do not have it. And we do not have the answers coming to this next town meeting. And we need those answers for the taxpayer. It's the first question they're going to ask is if we go for an override and say it's for the fire department, they're going to immediately say, what else are you going to be looking for? And are we all set for the next cycle? But they're so, not looking for three personnel at this 18 is one i understand right, right. Mm -hmm. and the other additional personnel is 219. Yeah. so i'm concerned with 218. Right. Well, so to the, the fire and personnel. how much money do we need over five hundred thousand dollars five hundred thousand k to balance 218. Well, David, you know we're taking money from opeb we we're supposed to leave seventy five thousand in free cash apparently we're still doing that right we haven't taken that it's going to stay there for free cash to show that we're trying to not take yeah, it. Yeah, so, so, I mean, yeah. you know, obviously the numbers are in flux right now. We're waiting for certification of the numbers, both in the Enterprise Fund and the General Fund. We just have the warrant for the October town meeting. You haven't even closed it at this point, so that's something that you need to do now. So as soon as you close that warrant and as soon as we certify the free cash, then at that point we can start pulling these things together. Right now, based upon the votes that were taken at the annual town meeting uh, and where the certified free cash is likely to be, uh, you're, you're kind Fine. of okay. You know, you're, what's causing the this, this stretch is the fact that we're trying to add functions that, and per personnel that are currently not there. So you think 18 there. will balance the way it's currently structured? I don't, I don't see a big problem in 18 unless we actually go forward with the priorities that you've put on the table, and that's what you're asked, that's well, what we're trying to do. When was the last year we had a balanced budget? Uh, every year is a balanced budget. No, without free cash. Uh, on the hope that we get it. See, because that's I'll what just, it is. I just, it's the hope that we get I just cash. remind everybody that we adopted for the first time a free cash policy back in December. We've been, been doing pretty good since 1659. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, really. Well, <laughs> not really. 2012 was the last time we put money into stabilization you from free cash. $2.5 million in stabilization. You've got yeah. tons of money. Jesus, it, they, they don't recommend you have any more. I realize that, but are we going to take money out of there to balance 218? Nope. That's my only question. If you can tell me we're not going to, I'm a happy camper. He says 218 is going to be fine. I didn't, I didn't say that. Right <laughs> I don't, I didn't, you're going to hold him to it? And you're going to make up the I difference? Quite, Burn his feet. I didn't quite say that. I said it's based on the vote that you took on, on. Correct. So until it's certified, we don't really know the answer. I know. It's hypothetical. We love to talk uh, about it. 
Well, you shouldn't have to talk about it, to be I honest with you. With you. So, it shouldn't be a question of free cash every year. Okay, go ahead. To get back to Joyce's point about the override, we can have that discussion about justifier, our HDIR, HR. That's all plan A. But to go back to plan B, even what the recommendations we have now are not enough. We can't count on ambulance. So to continue working on plan B, last time I'll try this, where else should finance committee look if we have to cut services? And Traditionally, the finance committee brings those things to us. We don't, we don't feed that back. If we did that, we wouldn't need a finance committee. That's why we look to the finance committee to review the options and the availabilities for cost savings. I think you guys came in here a couple months ago and said that the overall thing is, is that regardless of the select board, you represent the people in this town. So it's politics out of the side. You guys are supposed to be reviewing all the opportunities for savings. And if you bring it back and you say, we've done everything, we don't find it. It's not there. We don't see it. That's when we start talking about overrides, stabilizations, and what we're going to do for I mean, cuts. We, we look to the finance committee to bring to us the opportunities for savings. As, as it was you, stated, it's your budget. Mm -hmm. And as it was stated, that the finance committee and, whole, and the select board for hopefully now we wanted to work together yeah. to come up with this yeah. so it's not just us jerry well but at this point where there's no more fluff jerry we're we're talking about it's people cutting right. 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 yeah right. we're talking about getting you know cutting into services that already exist and so the only choices we really have are non-essential services that means things get pretty dismal around right. here and, the, and, and people are not going to like very, it so that's subjective to your point not essential is very subjective i can have an argument all day long on both sides of a, a department or a, a services being provided with anybody so i think to your point that's why you're coming and asking for some feedback what well we also was, have some notion of what you're going to support well so so right. what had been suggested earlier on because this isn't going well is would it make sense to have you know two people from select board two people from finance in the school representation to the extent they want to participate and go department by department service delivery plan well, i mean we've done the department by department i know but do you want to do it and nobody i mean i'm sure we've all done it on our own and and i've kind of come to the conclusion and we're going to do it again did. tomorrow mm -hmm. we have our meeting tomorrow and so we are bringing you uh, options and yeah. saying this is the options we come up with right it's on your lap now right no. and we feel kind of feel like that those options weren't very well received <laughs> right so in reality mm -hmm. it isn't what you came here with us is a and b right a override. full coverage with override and this is what you'll get if you vote for it if you don't vote for it b these are your cuts. It may be a police officer. It may be a fireman. It may be school teachers. That's the B is you got to fill in the blanks. Well, we what is the difference from the amount that you're proposing for an override and the cuts? And where are those cuts going to come from? It's only two, but it's going to be much deeper than that. Way deeper. Three or four times that in my mind. Last week. David issued a memo about the formal finance management team. Is this a role of that management team to go through? That's the, um, right, the town hall management team? Yeah. Finance I don't know. team, I... they look more into the borrowings and things like that, and finance, well, well, finance and budget projections. Yeah, I mean, yeah. representatives, though, across most of what you said, except some of the departments are not represented there. I think it would be very difficult. You know, to ask, ask the, the assessor and the, the treasurer to be looking at. I mean, again, if we had a finance director position, that's logically where it, it stands, but I'm just somewhat reluctant, at, especially when you start talking about personnel. I mean, certainly if there are other ideas on revenue generation of cost reduction that aren't touching people, I just wouldn't want them in a position of having to evaluate the, um, uh, you know, the the level of import of services provided by their co-workers you know that, that's a tough spot so yeah i think so, it's up to every department at this point and i think in the past i know we had to really thumb through when i was on school committee we had one year where um actually the kids um 
left school in protest of the cuts that were going to happen. Mm -hmm. And um, I went home from work sick that day to find them all at my house having a barbecue. As a <laughs> oh, so your budget went up. <laughs> <laughs> so the ones that like stayed most kids in school didn't get up. penalized, but the ones that left in protest, um, they did have to pay the consequences. But they were, in fact, looking at what the cuts were going to be. So I think just in bringing that out, I think that each department has the responsibility at this point to prove their budget and to see what can be cut and can't be cut. Um, I, I think not just because of us having to do it, but I think that each department is responsible for what their budget is, and is there anything in their budget that they could see that they could not have to do with. Um, so we'd like everybody to take a look at their own budgets, um, have any suggestions for us at all. I think that would make some sense. You agree I with think that? we're beyond that. I think we've been doing that for 10 years. Yeah. Well, I, I That's still my think concern. Your level funding budgets already did not give yeah. them any more. So, I mean, they've already looked at their budget. And okay, so we're, we're at this point, though. Right. I mean, we all have to be on the same page. Is there anything? When you go back to your school committee meeting next week, is there anything at all? Are there combined services we can do that we've been looking at between accounting and IT and things like that that we were going to take a look at? Um, so combined services, is there anything within people's departments that we can combine at all? I mean, I think these are things that we need to look at. You know, and I think that's something that's going to be brought up again and keep reminding the taxpayers, when you talk personnel and if you relinquish somebody from their position, they go on unemployment. So you lose the position and the highest amount you can receive in unemployment depending on the salary, is $600 a week. So you lose your employer, and the town doesn't pay into unemployment until the people start collecting. And then we pay dollar for dollar. So we lose the employee, and we pay the 600 so we get burned twice. That's why municipalities don't like to do any layoffs. So, but if we start diving into layoffs, it's going to really cost this town. And we haven't got our things up for unemployment, we have only had X amount of dollars in there. It could quadruple overnight if we have layoffs. And then we got to find the money to pay for that. So how do you suggest funding the full-time department department? I said it the way I said it earlier on with the articles and maybe the land. But you can't if we, yes, you money. can. If we can take that auto debt exclusion and borrow the land possibly, that solves the situation with the fire department because it's going to be a permanent debt exclusion. That way, by taking it off the debt exclusion, it'll be a permanent assignment. Well, so but, I think that certainly but until they analyze all this with our financial advisor, you know, it's sort of mute. You've got to crunch all those numbers, and everybody's got to be on the same page. And it will still take another ballot question, Donald. Yes, it okay, would. All right. Definitely. And oh, yes. All right. All right, so then we should probably wrap up. I know we did agree to have a more lengthy tri-board meeting, and we've certainly accomplished that. So it's um, quarter to eight right now. We have other agenda that needs to be taken care of tonight. Um, so I think we've made some progress relative to the warrant articles. The next order of business, as Donald just said, is um, working with Linda and David and David, David Eisenbaum and, and Dave Nixon to kind of rework those numbers and, and see, you know, kind of the scenario A and scenario B. Um, I think that we unfortunately haven't made as much headway um, with the recommendations from the Finance Committee, and I'm sorry for that. Um, I, I don't think it's appropriate to, to keep kicking this down the road. I think we, we're way beyond that. and. Um, I'm in favor of, uh, I will continue to have the conversation and look um, as far as putting this, in, I think the part-time elected officials health insurance will make its way to an agenda item. Um, I can do that and then we'll just see where the vote falls on that. And the same thing with, with um, Park and Rec, you know, I think that they have, should have an opportunity to come back um, and say their piece. And if there are any other areas to look at, I'm afraid that we are talking about potential collective bargaining impacts, and we are definitely talking about staffing 
I personally will go through it one more time. I hope fellow select board members can continue to take a look at the budget as well. David, um, in passion plea to the town employees who are usually a lot smarter than we are, um, maybe there's some stones that have not been unturned. But I'm really concerned about not addressing HR and IT. I think that is a huge morale issue. Um, if nothing else, and it's and by not addressing it, we're just perpetuating incredible inefficiency and frustration on the part of town staff. So I'm I'm hoping we can agree that that is part of the discussion in the fall, and that we're not just talking about fire personnel. So that's just where I am. Okay. Well, we have our meeting tomorrow, yep. and we'll be going through the big book again. And uh, anyone who wants to come and help us go through the big book, I'll be here. Yep. Um, I have a, another commitment earlier, so I may arrive late, but I'll eventually find my way there. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Last thing to show up. Maybe people check their calendars and show up if they choose to. Okay. Um, all right, so I'll keep working with, with uh, David and um, figuring out what our next agenda items are. Um, so next tri-board meeting, do we want to schedule that? Where? <laughs> <laughs> so, Let's just make so it for one night without anything else on the agenda. Well, maybe just, that's a a idea. Board, just a tri-board meeting. So. I, I think trying that's to get idea. into our regular meeting after a tri-board is, is uh, not working. We just have too much on our plate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would so prefer not to. So, so Jerry, you're gone next week? So you all uh, actually don't have any meetings tri -board. scheduled in September. Can say that again louder than so the select board has not set their calendar for September, October, November. I assume you want to meet the first and third uh, uh, Wednesdays of every month. <laughs> uh, yeah, and just so for the record, I am gone the first week of September on vacation. So I won't be here that first Wednesday, but I have no issue with people meeting. Um, in terms of a tri-board, though, do we want to have... So we're scheduling, or if we have scheduled the special town meeting on the 29th, mm -hmm. do we want to try to do anything in advance of that? We are. We have a meeting. We have a meeting on the. You have a meeting 23rd. on the. You have a How meeting far on the ninth. Want to do that? That's not a tri board right now, is it? No. No, no it's I'm saying it's for the tri board. Oh. Or you were talking about having a whole separate tri board. You want to come meeting. again for the special town meeting? I have a cot in the other room. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> do we need to do that for special? Well, I, I think we should all have our talking points together. The mm -hmm. week before. So what's on the agenda for the 23rd? 23rd is uh, tentatively is your public forum for the... Uh, the, the well, that means we have to have our ducks in a row before that, because mm -hmm. that's where we were going to make the arguments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. So we could... Does, how would people feel about doing like a, the night before on the 22nd or something like that? that kind uh, of you want to set it that close? Mm -hmm. I won't be here. So next next week we lose Jerry. We'll get to the hospital. Jerry's gone on the ninth. So the oh the sixteenth. Yeah, we could meet the sixteenth. Oh why not? Four weeks of five weeks in a row. Yay! I love you, Joyce. Let me start singing. Getting to know you. That's why you get paid a hundred dollars a month. Well, if we have a tri board on the 16th we have to start at seven because it just i have to get back from boston and that uh, what day well on the 16th and i have a meeting in boston so i know okay but you may be i mean we yeah. yeah i mean if we're not going to combine the tri board with the select board meeting because it's too much then we should start at seven that gives me some hope of getting here when is the next school board meeting 28th. 28th. Mm -hmm. Right, but we're also meeting the 14th to do the superintendent evaluation. Okay, so well, then you may have some thing, discussion right? on the 14th that. about the budgets and things of that nature, too? That's not one of the, the Not one of the agenda items? items? No, because then oh. they're going to the CPA meeting. Um, no, that's on the 28th. Oh, that's on the 28th, yeah. too? Yeah. Where are you? Okay, so select board meeting um, is scheduled for the 16th. Do we want to... Um, David, we can prioritize a discussion of the warrant for that meeting. The question is, do we start at 6 or start at 7? We could theoretically start at the select. Okay, all right. I have a dentist appointment at 
Right, then 7 o'clock it is. So, everybody plan on a long night. Okay. So, so, just from a traffic control perspective, on the 9th, you're signing the warrant and posting it. Yes. The 16th is too late to do that. So, the warrant will be out there in public. On the 9th, but we're talking about getting ready for the public forum and right, our talking points. Right, right, right. Right? Okay. Where's the public forum? Um, we haven't picked a place yet. We haven't yet. picked a place yet. No. And this is just for the four articles? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, it's coming up quick. I mean, really, they've watched it weekly now. Mm -hmm. I don't know who has missed it. Well, it's better than having the town meeting tomorrow, you which is the original plan, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> 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 yes, I've seen it last week. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, the general on-premise restaurant liquor license is that we uh, issue this common vehicular separately. It's a $200 fee. So that in fact, they get two licenses, one for the all-alcoholic on-premise for um, $3,500 for the year, and then a separate license for common vehicular for $200 per year. So um, this would be creating a new category of, of liquor license, which currently doesn't uh, uh, happen here in the town of Hadley. Mr. Eckerley is suggesting three things, actually. One, that we create this new liquor license category. Two, that we set the price at $1,700 for the year, and the three, to prorate that for the time that he's going to be open from late August. I think you're still on for late August to the uh, end of the calendar year. Um, the principle here is how much does it cost the town? Not to, not to look at the other markets out there, whether it's Northampton or Amherst or Sunderland or whatever, but how much does it cost the town to administer, issue and administer these licenses? We lose money on every single license that we issue. Um, the uh, I did a study back in 2015 that just to issue the license, it cost something on the order of $660 just to get the paperwork uh, handled. But then throughout the year to administer the license, make sure that everything is uh, all correct for the police, fire, building inspector services that are associated with running the restaurant, it's an additional $5,000. So it works out to about uh, $6,000 to issue the license, we get $3,500. So um, that's the situation right now. Have we ever done, um, you know, uh, Mr. Eckley's request of proration, have we ever done any sort of payment arrangements or are they all due in, in full up front? You have done proration and typically you do that uh, from the late October to the uh, end of the calendar year. This would be the first time that you would do something in August. Of the board. Madam Chair, I'd like to go on record. I don't like having an establishment that just serves alcohol. I think having food there, I don't care if it's munchies or and you put them out free for the people or if you have a little pizza oven, you warm up a pizza. I think it's relative to when you're drinking, mm -hmm. you know, having food along with alcohol. Mm -hmm. And that's just how I feel. Okay, but we already, the, the license was already granted. I know, yeah. okay. but right. we're trying to change it now. Um, the license been paid for? No. no. So he's requesting a. So I think what you're saying, David, is the only thing that we would really, um, because we haven't been in the business of creating categories of licensing fees, we've relied on the Commonwealth for that purpose. That um, we have in the past prorated licenses. You have prorated licenses in the past. That? I'd like to entertain the, the idea that we prorated so that we, we do every give them every opportunity. Uh, get the business up and running. Get the business up and running. Okay. We prorated on the thirty five hundred, and if we need to review the thirty five hundred, we let's not do that tonight. Uh, certainly, without any information available to us other than just okay. we'd like it done that way. But if we would, I, I would be in favor of prorating the license fee for this year. Mm -hmm. I'm in favor of prorating. Okay. Any further discussion? And we're keeping it the same designation at this point. At this point, yeah. yeah. It hasn't been our purview to. There'll be no food there at all. Well, I was going to respond. I'm in negotiations now with the local restaurants. I I want to get a food. I'm going to have a food phone there. My wife has something similar in her business. You pick it up and it dials a local oh, restaurant. Yeah, yeah. You order your food and they can deliver it down to you. And uh, mm -hmm. Stars Pizza in Florence does a fabulous business yeah. with my wife. They're there and they deliver and you can order. And it's, it's almost like having a restaurant there, but I don't have to prepare food deal with food or anything else. I just have to throw away some pizza boxes. Just trash. Yeah. yeah. And what about like peanuts and, you know, bar food? Yeah. We, prob probably so. We'll probably be something like, like that there. Well, it's to, to Donald's point, yeah. you get much more drunk if you don't have some food in you. But we're not here to debate that tonight, so um, we have Nor a motion made and seconded. That. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I explain that. It's a tap we, we assume that you're at 11. Exactly. It's not that type of place. So, uh, motion motion made seconded and seconded to grant the proration. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Okay. 
Okay, thanks. Okay. So you guys will let me know um, what that, you'll determine what that is? Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, right yeah. at the end of the table there. Okay, I'll be talking to him soon anyway, so right. thank you very much. Appreciate right. your time. Thank, thank you. you. Why'd you bring a check? You need us to do that right away? What's that? <laughs> Did you bring a check? Do you need us to do that right yeah. away? No, okay. actually, I'm out of checks almost. Oh. I have to get some more. Nice. Appreciate it. I, I tried. Okay. Um, <laughs> so next thing on the agenda. I <laughs> didn't have time to pull out my hard copy. Okay. Um, we have the evaluation of the DPW director. Marlo Warner, would you like to step forward? I'll step back. Marlo. And you step back. Easier. <laughs> 20 lashes with a wet needle. <laughs> okay. Um, so just to very quickly uh, recap the process that we're following here, um, Marlo did a self-evaluation that he was met. We jumped over? We jumping over? Oh, the substation in 61A? Yeah. Hold that thought, Marla. Okay. Now just stay right where you are. <laughs> um, senior Center Fire Substation updates. Is there anything more to just talk about? for the town to vote. Yeah, okay. I just, uh, that's what I thought. I just want to make sure. But right we didn't want to so, keep you here if that was the only yeah, reason you were here. Okay. Um, okay, so the DPW director, um, the process that we've gone through is Marlo did a self-evaluation. He shared that with us. We had a chance to digest it, review it. Um, we then uh, have a performance review form that the select board members, with the exception of John Muscovitz, because he obviously would have to recuse himself as a direct report to uh, Marlo, um, have completed completed that and we're prepared to talk about that tonight. The intent was to send it through the chair. Um, so I did receive Jerry's choices and did my own. We sent those out. So Marlo had a chance to see those today. I Donald, I didn't get yours, but uh, I don't even have it ready. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, and, and the reason that we okay. do that and we try to consolidate is so that um, we need to stay on the right side of the law because employees do have rights. So, um, this is a public session, so we want to make sure we stay true to the public session. If anybody had any particular um, problematic issues that might need to be addressed, then we would want to put the employee on proper notice that that was going to be discussed. So at this point, I'd say you've got. Um, so just summarizing, um, really the three, I, the ranges here were um, from on target to significantly above target. Um, and, and so we're using a below target, on target, above target, and significantly above target as the, the measurements. And um, across the board for the reviews that um, were submitted, um, you've fallen either at a minimum on target through significantly above target. And to recap, Marlo, or try to summarize the what people have said is that um, everybody here seems to recognize that um, this wasn't just a, if I can put it, normal, normal situation. Um, that there have been some um, long-standing problematic issues with the DPW. The DPW has a history. It was really only created a relatively short time ago. There's been some turnover in management there, um, and you know. Quite frankly, there have been some difficult um, personnel and union types of issues to deal with. So recognizing that you were coming into that, also recognizing that uh, there really wasn't a um, formal tracking system, software, things that you would be used to in other departments. Um, I think everybody is very appreciative of the work that you've done, that you've, you have not shied away from the problem. Um, you hit them head on, but nor did you come in like a, um, a bull in a china shop and start immediately making changes. You did exactly what you said you were going to do, both in the interview process and then initially when in your first meeting with us, which is to listen, observe, make sure that you um, gave everybody a clean slate using your words. Assume just every, every employee there was starting out. Um, you then evaluated how you thought the department should be organized. You've made those organizational changes. We've had the opportunity to see you hire. Um, and I think you know we've been very pleased with the outcome of your thought process and your decision making. So um, from that standpoint, I think everybody's in agreement that they find you to be very professional at almost all times, all times. Um, <laughs> the only one I want to share, I kind of uh, a little bit. 
the, <laughs> the, I, I get that a lot. Yeah. Go to his level. Yeah. yeah. Your communication, um, you know, you've been extremely diligent about um, keeping management informed, both David, um, myself as the chair, Jerry as the liaison to the department. And then in terms of your own staff, I think you've developed a communication plan with them that seems to be working very well. There may be some people that feel that they don't know everything, but quite frankly, I think you, you're exercising some degree of discernment that is appropriate in the department. Um, the budget, you, you know, again, that could have been a, an unmitigated disaster inheriting um, some of these things and not knowing, but th that's gone extremely well from our standpoint. Again, we rec appreciate the fact that you are turning back um, some dollars at, at the end of the year and yeah so again overall um, very favorable very favorable reviews and I guess I would ask Donald if you disagree or you want to add anything to that I agree there's no problematic areas that I would have with Mr. Marlowe mm -hmm. nothing you know uh, he's done great preventive maintenance for this town and saved us money in that aspect and, uh, you know, the, my only problem is getting more information earlier, and I guess i got to talk more with Jerry, that's all, so I can stay on base with what's happening. But and you know, that's my fault. And, and now that we've so. agreed multiple times tonight, you can talk to me, too. Well, yeah, yeah. occasionally. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. All right, so appreciate that. So, And that's across the board from all of us, I think. If John weighed in, he'd have very similar things to say as well. Uh, uh, we're proud of hiring you, and we're proud of the job you're doing. You're doing a great job. And, and as Molly had said, you know, it just comes through every day in every way. Well, I, I'd like to say that I'm very happy here. Um, I settled in pretty well with the community. It's great I'm dealing with the taxpayers. Um, uh, it feels like home, to be quite frank with you. Um, that's how I feel, and that's how I approach it. I've always found you very responsive. Um, I try to go through Jerry most of the time, and on a couple occasions I've talked to you directly, and you know, and then then also kept Jerry informed. But um, I just find you responsive to anybody's needs, and you put it on the work list, and it gets done. And you know, I'm happy with the job that you've been doing from day one. So thank you. Thank you. You know, one thing that was repeated numerous times at. Uh, Mike Klamoski's uh, dedication ceremony was not only by him, previous ones, Hadley isn't the easiest town to work in. And it's probably because of our citizens, they're very opinionated, yeah. and they let the public works director know what's happening in this town. And so it's not an easy position to fill, and you're always available, you're out in the public's eye all the time. And, and, and you know? I, I think I've said it more than once, and, and it holds true. Uh, we have a lot of infrastructure for the size of the community that we have to maintain, repair, uh, look forward to replacing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a DPW that has all the same issues with infrastructure as a larger DPW or a larger city. So, um, you sometimes get yelled at as much as David. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I think I do more hiding. Do you? I mean, you have to be creative. You have to uh, find ways to get it done. Um, it's just the way it is. You know, and I think it's indicative of what transpired on the Route 9 project, how well it went, you know, and it finished up way before it had to, and you saved us hundreds of thousands of dollars with your envision of things, you know, to prevent things to correct them and happen. And Hundreds of thousands of dollars? Well, there was on Route 9. I'm talking about the future if something happens. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got to play that in. Just that uh, little job they did on the intersection of Middle Street. Yeah. If you didn't do that and then you had a break there, we'd be in big trouble. It'd probably be a million dollars uh, to repair it. I remember when that project, I first came aboard, that was, was like, wow, this We're is We're really it. tight on time tonight. I didn't know where West Street was, and I'm out here making calls on a water main project. I mean, that was like trial by fire. Um, so you're hanging around for, um, we do have an executive session. Um, so that's, again, for the 
viewing audience, we separate the performance evaluation, which is public, um, to the extent there are any you know, personnel matters related to contracts, et cetera, that's held in executive session. So uh, we'll be talking uh, to you a little later tonight as well. Okay. So again, huge thank you, obviously. Very good. Absolutely. We're happy to have you. you and hope you stay. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. I'm Even after happy. that two-hour charge board meeting. Yeah. So, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Get rooted. That's part of the rooting. <laughs> August 29th, I mean, we have to do the 61A, right? Yeah, I was just going to say, so for 61A, David, is that... Um, yeah, at some point you have to say that you're actually going to exercise your right of first refusal. It doesn't have to happen tonight, but I'm just going to keep it on the agenda until we do. Does it have to get closer to the time so we have a longer period of time? Yeah, Still, you is, think, is the yeah. clock running? The clock is running, but we have until September 15th before okay. you can... I, you can still pull that trigger. I, I mean, really, I'm you got to. moving forward, but is, does anybody have any reason they think it'd be prudent I'm, to hold off? If if we were to get a recommendation from that from the fire committee, I I would be whatever tell you me. guys okay. tell us what you want to do is what I want to support. You guys are in the trenches every day doing that. We're still looking if, at the fifteenth for the meeting. Okay. Okay, so we'll hold them. You vote to exercise the right to purchase. That may become. A, Binding contract whether town meeting approves it or not. All so right, you might so want to. Maybe we might want to hold might up. Want to wait until. That'd be really important to That's a good yeah. suggestion, Dan. <laughs> says no, they may say, well, gee, he's still on, on the hook for the water. Then we're each going to have a building lot. Exactly. Only with going on there. We're all going to be neighbors. <laughs> John picked the wrong meeting. <laughs> Building lot All right, so basically, this, is, this is new information. We should defer this. Yes, absolutely. Right. Thank Definitely. you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Yep. Okay, uh, the town meeting, is, is there anything further we no. need on that? Are we done with that, David? Uh, let's see. I just want to make sure there's something we need to vote on. I mean, at some point, you have to, to figure out the division of motions. You don't have to We don't do have to do that, that tonight. tonight. Okay, communication plan. Um, this one, so we discussed this at the last meeting and then Motion to approve. <laughs> okay. I, I was the obstruction. Yeah. I had a chance to read it. And it. I just want to review it and look okay. at it a little further. And I, I, I would have, I think, tweaked some things, but there's nothing at all in there that is objective. I, I have no objection to any of that. Okay. Okay. Motion made, did you second? Yeah. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion on the communication plan? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Uh, October special town meeting warrant. Oh, God help us. Okay. Well, let's get through the next one before we start. I, I would like to make an addition to that, please, and it has as much to do with CPA. But I, I'm, I'm positive the Municipal Buildings Committee uh, would like the painting of Town Hall as a CPA article. I think that Tim was supposed to talk to you about this, and we, we had a conversation about this once already i want to make sure that gets done and brought forward especially yeah. if we know that cpa has a meeting coming up hold on one second i was working on the capital plan this uh afternoon and i saw that was in there i think that was to, that was listed for 2019. hold on one second by the capital buildings committee that's what they submitted so it was $284,000 in 2019 for a town hall painting. That's what they're Could you please just saying. double check that date? Okay, I'll definitely do Thank that. you. Okay, and I'm just scrolling through here. So that would be a CPA article? Absolutely. Okay. We've got HCOG on here that Donald had um, requested before. And do we have the possibility of a dissolution of the Park and Rec Commission on this yet? No, you do not. Okay, I'm, I'm going to request that that be put on there as, as a placeholder for okay. future discussion. All right. If you'd allow me a couple minutes, I would update you on HCOG. I'm more than happy to have you do that, but Jerry. I am as well. Oh, okay. Because uh, there's a lot of pertinent <laughs> things. We've accepted executive minutes and things. That, okay. Uh, two, three minutes, hopefully. If I go too long, kick me. I will. She will. Okay. Yeah. Let me read you a first thing, a statement off the uh, financial statement that we just received and accepted the minutes for the end of June 30th, 2016. And this sort of is going to tell it like it is. The company financial statements have been prepared, assuming that the council will continue as a going concern. As discussed in note 25 to the financial statement, the council has sustained 
losses in its current and previous years that have raised substantial doubt about its ability to continue as a going concern. Management plans in regard to these matters are also described in Note 25. The financial statements do not include any adjustments that might result from the outcome of the uncertainty. So our, you know, there's our uh, financial statements are telling us we cannot continue that's with the, the amount of revenues that we're getting in. And that's the opinion letter? That's the opinion letter, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, our chairman read it last meeting and uh, so we're all concerned. <coughs> we're supposedly, I can release this now, the name of the company's Clarity. They're engaging in them to upgrade the image and start doing the right things for uh, members of the council. It may be too late. Uh, they want to take a hard look at HR for all the smaller towns. Uh, some good news is, uh, and it's dealing with the uh, insurance. And in actuality, the trust came in 9.4% less than the budget, which results in about $48,000. Uh, there'll be some changes that are coming forth. Uh, they're all the same as GIC, and these five are co-payments co that GIC already has, and uh, it's gonna affect uh, deductible in pharmaceuticals to get us back into where we should be. Point of interest, Amherst is self-insured. Mm -hmm. They just raised theirs 10% for Amherst and Pelham. Uh, so that's good news for mm -hmm. us. And with these implementations, they're expecting a 6% decrease. So that's good news for us too. So, but so again, we're not, you know, um, the, the trust itself, the insurance trust, we're continuing to be comfortable with, it's the HCOG itself. Mm -hmm. So it's a separate entity. It's a separate really. entity. Really, would, would it be like um, opening an exploratory conversation? And I know this isn't easy, but just formally opening an exploratory conversation with the FERCOG while we figure out. It, I mean, I would rather run a parallel mm -hmm. track, and and you know, I would like to see the HCOG succeed, but. We also need to make sure that we have the ability to... See, I don't